So now we get to turn to Europe and we're going to start off with looking at the aggregate because we started to get some of the information from the PMI side. And one of the things that we had been talking about in September was things have got, had gotten pretty good in August. And then we, some things started to weaken in September. Now there was a mixed bag because we saw Germany weakening, but some of the other areas were showing some strength. And when you look at the, the what recently came out, we were clearly not not bearish enough, just given where the actuals, where the survey was, and then where the actuals came in. And one of the things where the manufacturing was expected to be at 60.3, came in at 58.7. Then you look at the uh, services, was expected at 58.5, came in at 56.3. Again, all of that pulling things down on the composite to 56.1. So we expected that slowdown in, in manufacturing, but services was the one that we were expecting to see a little bit of a, a growth through September versus what things were. Maybe maybe the, the official PMI will be a little bit different, but again, this was a bit more of a surprise than what we were expecting. And, and for those that apparently think I'm a perma bear. Uh, this is, I wasn't bearish enough. So it, it, again, it's still growth. It's still moving in that direction, but we saw some bigger surprises out of France and Spain that, which kind of pulled some of that down. And then when you look at money supply, it obviously continued to grow as we start to look at what are some of the implications of that. So when we look at headline inflation and trim means, here's where you can look at, uh, this is kind of putting the U S and Europe together. So when you look at where we are on the U S side, Things have leveled off a bit, and, and there's still some upside, but the pace of increases have slowed. They'll still be positive, but the pace won't be the same, where when you start looking at, at Europe, we're reaching this inflection point, and, and I, I really think you're going to start to see that accelerate to the upside, and it's going to be a mixture of consumers buying more and the ability to pass on some of that cost, but you're also seeing a continuous increase in inputs. And, and Spain had a huge increase in PPI. We're seeing, uh, again, that, that producer price index rising everywhere. So it's not so much that Europe isn't going to follow. It, it will. The, the pace of it will. It'll probably slow down sooner. But again, you're still seeing kind of where that future holds and how that's going to continue to pull up because the trim mean is also starting to turn and you're going to start to see that continue to grind higher, obviously, at a, at a much different clip than some of the uh, the others. But then when you look at the distribution of inflation, it, it's a bit different in terms of the U.S. Because when you look at Europe, Europe has a, 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 a continuous amount between that zero to two percent. And and the U.S. had, had a decent amount below zero percent. And when you look at the inflation side, you have to look at, well, why did the U.S. have the most below zero percent? Well, we're an importing nation, and and we've been exporting, as we've said however many times, that we've exported inflation. We've exported our supply chain. So now, as inflation increases abroad, and we don't have the ability to pivot once again, we're getting hit with a much bigger amount of that above 4%. And you're seeing that accelerate extensively, where in, in Europe, you're sitting with a large amount of that between 0 and 2%. And you're starting to get some of that 2 to 4% creeping in. But based on just the size of the countries, how they are in terms of exporting versus importing, you're really, you're really not going to see that above 4% shock. So that's where you're going to get that difference between what is happening in the US, what is happening in Europe. They're going to follow the same path, the same trend, but just uh, essentially stop diff- at a different point. But the consumer is also not doing as well in Europe as they are in the U.S. Now, that's starting to, to adjust a bit. But again, the Europe, the Europe had a problem prior to COVID. So it's the consumer was struggling, wages were struggling, employment was struggling prior to anything COVID brought to us. So this is where, that again, if you don't have a consumer that can take that additional price and that are going to adjust, then you can't really see the same type of pass-through 
where the U.S. has been able to pass through more of those price increases, especially given what people have or had sitting in the banks. So then when you look at the borrowing from the euro system, so the borrowing obviously exploded under the TL, T, uh, TRO uh, 3, and that's that's starting to roll over. Now, it, again, it's not stopping. It's just starting to pause as we go into Q4 based on what uh, L- Lagarde has said and where that's going to progress, but you're still going to see this continuous support. It's just going to be at a slower clip than what it has been, given that they're now really on kind of the other side of where COVID was. But then when you look at the city economic surprise index, you can see that there was a huge drop. And one of the things is we've been saying that that estimates were too high, estimates had to come down. They started to come down, but clearly not enough. And and you but we've been on this downward slope since the since essentially May, where we've had this continuous exuberance or or view that things weren't as bad as they actually were on a real economic level, which again continues to point to how wrong is economic growth? You know, where is that macro backdrop as we continue through the remainder of Q uh, into Q4 and for really the remainder of 2021? So when you look at businesses, businesses continue to contract in terms of the eurozone loans, but households are making up some of that difference now. One of them is is more of a shot in the arm in terms of households getting additional capital where business loan to businesses is, you know, CapEx, it's hiring, it's building, it's R&D. So I would say for long-term growth, the lack of business loans is a bit more concerning, but at the same time, you could say, well, why? Because they people just rushed, took the money that they needed and then don't need anymore. Where if you look in, in on the consumer side, you never really had that same response, which is 100% accurate. And that's why there's a mixture of both where there you've you already have the eurozone businesses that don't need anything uh, need anything else they don't really need to to continue to borrow and they can use cash on hand so it's just it's it's going to be interesting interesting to see where does that stop because we'd like to see that slow down a bit and still see those businesses getting loans and trying to uh, to invest so now when we look at germany th- this is the biggest miss for for me was really germany so I, again, I was expecting in the in the fives for those that have been following us, but the German manufacturing was expected at sixty one point four, came in at fifty eight point five, services PMI was expected at sixty point three, came in at fifty six, and then the the composite was expected at fifty nine point two, came in at fifty five point three. So that's a stark difference. Like you're seeing that big drop down. And then, but then when you look at, uh, at expectations, so expectations were expected 96.5 came in at 97.3. <coughs> Excuse me. Current assessment was expected at 101.8 came in at 100.4. Business climate was expected at 99 came in at 98.8. So you're seeing a, a general slowdown in manufacturing and services and again, that comes down to, well, how strong is the consumer? Where is this going to go? And then you're starting to see some of that softness bleed into not only just current, but also the business climate, while expectations are expected to get a little bit better. But remember, Germany also has an election, which is going to put a little bit of an overhang of, well, who's going to win? How is that going to shift things? So you know, what is that going to do? And you're starting to see a little bit of that softness. But then for October... Consumer confidence was expected at negative 1.5, came in at positive 3.3. So you, that's a that's a nice little shift. So maybe we're starting we're on the other side, and September was kind of the low point, and we'll start to see some of that recovery. What what gives me pause in that statement on the manufacturing side is the lack of raw materials, and you're and that's not going away in Q in in October or in Q4. So manufacturing can continue to be problematic, but I think this bodes well for services that probably got that low point and now we'll start to see a bit of that upswing as we go through the remainder of, uh, of October. So then you, you flip to France, business confidence right in line, well, expected at 110, came in at 111. Manufacturing confidence was expected at 109, came in at 106. Production outlook was expected at 12, came in at 23. But let's look at PMI, right? So France PMI for, uh, uh, for, for manufacturing was expected at 57, came in at 55.2. 
Services was expected at 56.1, came in at 56. Composite was expected at 55.7, came in at 55.1. So one of the things that we've been talking about with, with, with both France and Italy, but Italy less so because Italy's been doing well in manufacturing and the consumer or services, where France has been has been fairly in line with estimates and, and, and very stable growth. Like the previous month, if for services was 56.3, came in at 56. The services side has been fairly stable. It's the manufacturing that continues to struggle, especially when you could start talking about France, which again is it's shortfalls, it's assembly lines, it's availability. I mean, these things are real problems that aren't going away quickly with consumer confidence expected at 100, came in at 102. So when we start looking at the IFO for Germany and you look at manufacturing, you can see that on the manufacturing side, expectations are falling, business climate coming down, assessment of business situation, all of it is starting to roll a bit where service sector is a little bit of a recovery, kind of the stabilization when you look at services, which again is why I have a bit more confidence on that side because the trend is changing on the surface on the service side. While the trend remains pretty terrible on the manufacturing side, still positive, we're not negative, but you're moving in the wrong direction and it's really driven by trade. As we've been talking about time and time again, Germany is an exporting nation and China is a big part of their portfolio. So as that becomes a bigger overhang, we expect to see trade and manufacturing respond and struggle in kind as construction still in, the, in negative territory, but again, starting to get positive, starting to kind of turn the, the corner on some of that softness. Now, business expectations survey was for 96.5, again, came in at 97.3, still down from previous, but again, still positive, still in an in a, in a expansionary place and a little bit better than expectations, which is the hope that as you get into October or get past the election, you'll start to see some of these recoveries. And then Germans have become richer than their peers, which is not really surprising given just the wealth factor in terms of where things are. As, Germ as Germany is an exporting nation, they're able to export some of that additional capacity or additional price, which helps to offset and preserve some of that wealth. So then when we, when we turn to Italy, so Italy consumer confidence was expected at 115.8, came in at 119.6. Manufacturing expected at 112.7, came in at 113. Economic sentiment right in line with pretty much last month of 113.8. So again, things in Italy continuing to, to progress forward where Spain... GDP um, uh, missed for 2Q estimates, but PPI month over month came in at 1.9% and year over year came in at 18%. Again, you're starting to see Spain continue to struggle. So there's, there's that bifurcation of, of assets in terms of Germany is really that driving force. And as we've been saying that Germany is the one that is slowing. And as they've slowed, that's going to, again, pull down the rest of Europe, just given how Germany is so outweighted, uh, is, is outweighted in or overweight in the uh, euro and in, in the uh, European economy. And those are some of those pivot points that we've been highlighting. And until we get a real turn, and it, we're getting in services, but again, it's an exporting nation. It's a manufacturing nation. So the fact that manufacturing is struggling now, as we turn into the end of September and into October, you have massive explosions in, in electricity prices. You know, you've, you've had pet chem shortfalls. You've had, um, uh, uh, you know, fertilizer, uh, uh, um, what's the other thing? Fertilizer and uh, refiners. You have all of these slowdowns because they just can't afford to operate given where electricity prices are. And that's going to be a big overhang further when you look at the manufacturing side, which again is just going to put more weight on kind of a floundering slash kind of struggling economy, which is trying to come to the other side of COVID with a lot of headwinds ahead of it. So now that we've talked about Europe in the next segment, we're going to continue on with electricity and issues in China and then talk about a bit more broadly on Asia as well.